What's booming, yeah, it's your boy Shinko Floor, and I just want to talk about something that's been cooking up on Twitter for the past couple of days. Um, now, nothing too crazy, just want to give my take. And um, the thing that's been cooking up is that, obviously, June the King is creating his documentary for DSP, or his DSP documentary, whatever. You know, whatever. And he's already giving us a peek of how it's going to go. And I just have something to say about that. Nothing too crazy. All right. So two days ago, uh, Juni King had tweeted, I believe that any detractor page group channel made for any other purpose than entertainment always fails. Does anyone know if there are any examples of longstanding ones that could counter this narrative? Now, I felt like this was a loaded question because the whole purpose of detracting Phil is for entertainment. That, that's how that's that's the core. That's how you came across Phil. That's how, you know, that's how you come across Phil. That's how Phil tries to paint himself as an entertainer. The detractors make the content that he puts out that is boring, that is meant to specifically just game the system, that's meant to specifically manipulate his audience, that's meant specifically f as, a, as a vehicle for panhandling, and they turn it into entertainment. Please speak. Because at its core, that's what YouTube's for, entertainment. That's why people load up the app on their phones and tablets. That's why people go onto the website, on their desktops, on their laptops, to be entertained. If we could go beyond entertainment, we can only go as far as informative. That's about it, to be entertained and to be informed on something. So I responded, you know, in the same vein. Uh, this is a loaded question, but to answer it, I would say every single clip channel. Since Phil is known to outright lie and obfuscate, every clip channel serves a point of reference in debunking any of Phil's lies or exposing any of his scumbag behavior. Okay, TLDR, outside of entertainment, we could say as a point of transparency and as to be informative. Okay, Steve goes straight to the point and says, most attractive channels exist for that purpose. Can't help but feel like you're looking to cherry pick examples with this one. Agreed. June responds, and this is the this is the tweet that prompted me to make this video. Okay, not cherry picking. I'm trying to figure out how to get it across to an audience that detractive communities are too paranoid, varied ideologically to be unified, but will come together when someone poisons the well. Hence why no one too insane stays prominent and this is what had me say dude what the fuck are you talking about because i legit felt slow reading this so he's like i'm not cherry picking i'm trying to figure out how to get in across an audience that detractor communities are too paranoid varied ideologically to be unified but will come together when someone poisons the well hence why no one too insane stays prominent now we're talking about paranoid what paranoia like, I really needed him to flesh that part out because I didn't understand what he meant by paranoid. Nobody's paranoid over DSP. Like, even myself with my, you know, my, my, my theories and my pattern, you know, pattern recognition. I'm, dude, I, I do it on my iPad. I discuss in Discord. I stream on YouTube. I tweet. After that, I step away from the screen and I go live life. It's not that serious, bro. Like, it's not like, you know, I got a, a cork board with push pins and stuff like that. Like, nah, it's not. It's never that serious because, again, it's not entertaining. Like, I'm here to be entertained. If it's not entertaining, I'm not dealing with it, okay? Now, the part of varied ideo ideologically, that's the part that got me. That's the part where it showed, that's the part where it showed how slow I really am. So I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, what, why are we bringing ideologies into this? Like, I was slow. I was like, because, you know, I... You know how it is. My mind deflected to like politics and religion. It's like nobody comes to fill for that. Like nope, nobody. People have different beliefs and different you know stances on things, but those things don't pertain to fill. So I was, I was really slow, really really slow on that. So Steve goes, uh, there is no paranoia. Like yeah, there is no paranoia. The tractors are a community that consists of a wide variety of people. So if you don't like one restreamer you or creator, you can easily find another you will like. What you're talking about is a community policing itself. And what happened to the last community that tried to police itself? They imploded because they went beyond the realm of entertainment, and people weren't tuning in anymore. 
and they, you know, they were, you know, ignored. So I just didn't understand what he, he was, what he meant, because then he doubles down and goes, he doubles down, but then agrees with Steve, which is, which is weird. He goes, there's undeniable paranoia. Yes, but there's undeniable paranoia. But yes, there are a variety of creators that represent different approaches to their entertainment that reflect their ideologies in the loosely knit detractor communities. So you're agreeing with him. So if you're agreeing with him, why are you trying to get get it across your audience that detractors are too paranoid or varied ideologically to be unified? Dude, this is the part where it's like you're trying to paint a narrative here because you admit it. I'm trying to figure out how to get it across to an audience. You shouldn't be you shouldn't have a, you shouldn't have to figure it out. If that was the case, you would be able to showcase that in your documentary. So if I say I need to show people how DSP is a racist, I don't figure anything out. I literally go to his channel, pick out the clips that I need, and I play them. And I upload them. And I work them into a video. What the hell? Are you serious? This is the fucking flashback. Shut the fuck up when I'm talking, you stupid anime bitch. Go! It was all set up. She's taking the car, and they're gonna take the rap for it. That's why you never trust a black chick with a mohawk. I always live my life by one important credo. Never trust a black chick with a mohawk. Never. I brought Navarro on board. This is on me. Just get Mac and Rap to safety. I've got a police scanner and Rap GPS tracker. At least let me help you. Head towards the spillway, but you've got to hurry. Oh, fuck. Cops are walking down the sector. Oops. Remember, folks, that's one important rule to live by. If you live your life by that, you'll actually have a nice, long, happy life. No, no black chicks with that's mohawks. Stay bastards. away. Come at me. Come oh, at fuck. Me. One out of 35, one percent of possible. Cops, straight ahead. When he outright lies and says something, I don't have to figure out how to get this across to the detractor community. I literally go straight to the source, straight to his streams, upload, done. So you can't do that. You can't outright show how crazy we are. You outright can't show how paranoid we are. So you're sitting there reaching out to us to help you figure out how to create that narrative. When you know, because you admitted it, that we're loosely knit. So... Shout out to Throwaway on Twitter because Throwaway had the balls to ask, you know, to ask what I didn't, and what is even your point here? I legit feel stupid for not knowing, for not getting what you mean, and I don't want to be mean. I just want to understand what you're saying. So, June responds, "My bad. A basic rundown is in this video. I'm trying to show how fractured the community really is. There are people who launch doxing campaigns, others that disagree with those tactics, few that hold personal grudges against Phil, many that just don't watch, that just don't interact and watch it unfold. But when it comes, when someone gets too crazy and somehow gets into the limelight and represents everyone poorly, then that's when there's some scarce unification. Now, right off the bat, that last tweet right there literally just disregarded everything." Thing you've been trying to say but when someone gets too crazy and somehow gets into the limelight and represents everyone poorly then that's when there is some scarce unification but my thing is if we're so we're so fragmented how is it that we're able to maintain an identity that doesn't that doesn't add up so we 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 we, we can't agree on the way that people do things with phil but we can stand together as detractors. What kind of corny shit is that? That doesn't make any sense, bro. And again, you're trying to show how fractured the community is. You can't do that because we're not really that fractured. Now, Meerkat brought up an exciting point. Now, if you're trying to paint us as wings trolls, and you are able to find people who are like that within the community. I mean, like you can find them, not that you can figure out how to get it to your across to your audience that they're like that. 
If you can find them and you can showcase that behavior, so be it. And I agree with him. Even if it was me on that shit. Like, yeah, I agree with you. But the thing is you're trying to do, June, is that you're trying to say the entire community is like that. And that doesn't make any sense. You're making it seem like the harassment, the harassment, the malice, the almost criminal things that really break up the community in terms of disagreeing on how things should be done is the core of what DSP detractors do. And that's disingenuous. Again, we keep it within the realm of entertainment. Even people who have a passionate, who are more passionate or who have a more vested interest in Phil, such as myself, understand it is all about entertainment. If it goes beyond entertainment, nobody's tuning in because nobody wants to spend their time dealing with negative shit on the internet when they have to deal with negative shit in real life. Now, as far as the, as far as the uh, somehow gets into the limelight and rep represents everyone poorly, in those cases, again, in those situations, it went beyond the realm of entertainment, even with myself. I have caught that charge before, and I had to admit I was wrong, and I had to say, I'm keeping it back, I'm keeping it back to the basics. If it's not entertaining, I'm not dealing with it, Period. There was, there's, there's no big fallout. There's no, no, we just ignore it until it goes away and that's it. The, the biggest case I can present is Pastor Eric Miller. Pastor Eric Miller was a, was a detractor who was, you know, had a steady, had a steady niche. He applied the Bible and its teachings to what Phil was doing. There were many times where he was cooking. And out of nowhere, bro, out of nowhere, the dude just got on his soapbox and started criticizing detractors as a whole. For what? For not defending Amaranth. So I want you to understand this. This pastor went ahead and got upset at a community that follows a 40-year-old problematic man-child. For not defending the ethot. And we ignored him. So it got to the point where he started attacking people. That's the even reason why even people even got at the dude, because they were because he was attacking people. And even then, what happened? The dude went nuts. And he spiraled out of control. And he went away on his own organically. Why? Because people weren't tuning in. Because it wasn't fun anymore. So, June, right off the bat, this isn't looking good. Because instead of focusing on why this locale specifically has generated the haters, the trolls, the critics, the detractors that he has, you're focusing on these people, on the detractors specifically. And you're trying to give that to your audience. As in, look, these people do crazy. They're so crazy, this and this and that. Don't you think it would make for a better story to explain why these things happen? Why this is all on the internet in the first place, I think it would make for a better story. I think the concept of, you know, I think the concept of the guy going out of his way to, you know, basically commit fraud within a company. Now, we basically had to bullshit Machinima, all right? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you the true story now. This was bullshit. We wanted to make up a story with Machinima, all right, to get a reason for him to come with me is a better story. I think the concept of a man who's been given multiple opportunities to be successful and outright deny those opportunities simply because it would cause him to step out of his man-child comfort zone. I think that would be more entertaining. It's super coded, but oh no, this is not a big deal. You have to understand. And if I remember correctly, I think he did actually do a concession in the final email here. 
I think this is the second half of his conversation with me. Yeah, he tries he tries to say stuff like, oh, we're a small up and coming company. Listen to this. A rising tide lifts all boats. What is this bullshit? Dude, I'm just a guy uploading gameplay videos to YouTube. I don't need your jargon. I don't need you throwing fucking mottos at me and shit. Like, what is this? Right? Like, all I wanted to do was upload videos to YouTube as a hobby and, and have it be fun. That was it. This guy contacts me and says, well, keep doing what you're doing, but make some money doing it. Fine. So they send me the contract. I sign it. Oh, by the way, here's all the rules and regulations and things you don't do now that you have to do to make money with us. Wait, what? But that wasn't what I signed up for. I signed up to literally just upload my exact videos to your channel. That's what I told you I wanted to do. You said, yes, that's what it would be. And now here we are. And you send me a second list of rules. That's bullshit, right? So as you can see, <clears throat> they, did, they did make some concessions, but they didn't do all. Like they were saying, oh, no, you absolutely must have the logo and you must do this and that. So you want to know the truth? I told them, no, I'm not doing that. And I never did. So in 2009, I had this talk with them. I signed a contract, right? And then I basically blew them off. And I never really spoke with it. They Every once in a while, I get an email, hey, you ever going to upload? I just ignored it. I just completely blew them up. I think a, a documentary about a guy who went ahead and groomed a 17-year-old girl when he was in his mid-20s to late 30s. No, mid-20s to early 30s, sorry, and made her move halfway across the country just so she can clean up after him, just so she can cook for him because he doesn't know how to do those things himself. Would we'll make for a better story. Okay, so due to Leanna's hard work today downstairs, the living room went from a huge mess of bins to this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our entire Blu-ray collection alphabetized. I think a documentary on a man who for some odd reason is inclined to target children would make for a better story. All right, let's do the celebratory bubble blow for you guys. That was a nice one. You want to know why? Because my fan's off now. Who decided to target children with his content and thought that the best way to attract said children, or let's use a better word, minors, because he's, he's used the word teenagers before, minors. And the best way to attract those minors is to display sexual, vulgar, raunchy humor. I've been a YouTuber for 15 years. 10 years ago, I certainly would say I was trying to portray a different style of humor because back then I feel like my audience was a lot more immature. I was a lot younger. And therefore, because of that, I had a teen audience. I really don't believe many or any teenagers watch my content anymore. It's funny, we're watching Red Dead. It was the wild west of YouTube back then. You could basically say or do anything. And so I was trying to appeal to a, a, a younger audience. Back then, my audience was a lot of teenagers. And I knew that was the kind of commentary that they were looking for, and that's what got me popular. So that's what I did back. I think that this would be more like, you know, this is for a certain audience. This back then, everyone who watched my content was like a teenager or a young adult. They liked that kind of irreverent humor. I you keep your fucking mouth shut because you're a moron. You live a life as a foul sea slave. So let's go squish her. <sighs> oh, I'm having an orgasm as you speak. Oh. Idiot. Hell yeah. I think I got another. Another upgrade. What is this one gonna do? This one gives women orgasms immediately. On command. It's worth ten bajillion dollars. <laughs> Brian Park. You, loosen her pants. Keep your eyes open. I think a documentary on a guy who white knights basically a pedophile and actively white knights for a pedophile would make for a more entertaining story. So my thing is you got so much to choose from, so much that could just just get you the views, so much that can get you the get you the things that you're looking for with this content. Instead of you outright trying to paint us as crazy people. Yes, there are people who take it too far and they either get ignored or they get criticized for taking it too far. Why? Because once again, they're stepping outside of the realm of entertainment.
So, June, if you're going to go ahead and make that documentary, go ahead. But just understand, if you're troll shielding for Phil, when everything, when everything that he's done comes to light, just remember, it's going to be, it's going to be in the, on the internet forever. You had a chance to showcase that stuff, but you actively didn't and actively went for the people who were calling out that stuff instead. I don't think that's going to make for a good look for your channel, bro. And with that, I'm out. Catch you later.